let's find an integral across the entire real number line. That is to say, let's do an example where we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity. Here's the example we'll do, and it's a little complicated. The really complicated part of this example, though, actually has nothing to do with these infinite signs. It comes from the fact that to use the fundamental theorem, we need to be able to find the antiderivative of this thing. And it's not really clear how you'd go about to that. So the reality is that sometimes you just have to mess around and hope that something works. I know that's not a very concrete guideline, but it's no less true for that. Let's ignore these infinity symbols for a bit and just look at the indefinite integral. Let's try to find the antiderivative. This doesn't look like anything we're familiar with. Nothing here makes us think of trig substitution. It's not clear how U substitution would help. There is no product, so integration by parts is probably out. And certainly we don't have powers of the sine and the cosine. So all we can really do is play around and hope something turns up. And the only thing that's coming to mind for me is that this is a sum of fractions. It's not written that way, but it is one. And if we're adding fractions together, sometimes it's helpful to find a common denominator and actually do the addition. So lacking any better idea, let's try that. The common denominator is e to the power of x. When we get that common denominator here, we'll multiply numerator and denominator by the exponential. So our numerator becomes this square when we multiply what we already have by e to the x. And when we do this addition, we get to this improper fraction. It's still not clear how to integrate this. In fact, it frankly looks worse than before. 
but at least we see is may perhaps we see something we can do with this. We don't love having fractions of fractions. So let's take this big fraction and multiply numerator and denominator by e to the x to clear this fraction in the denominator. And when we do that, something finally emerges. Something squared plus one looks familiar. This could be an arc tangent. There's no guarantees. If we let u equal e to the x, the denominator becomes u squared plus one. That's exactly what we need for an arc tangent. But we'd need to get rid of this in the numerator. For an arc tangent, we need a one up here. Well, fortunate. That is precisely what we get. This is a du, which of course is one du. So we came into this with no clearer idea than mess around and see what happens. But it ended up getting us the indefinite integral that we needed. And actually to try to keep individual video lengths down, let's end this here and then we'll pick right up in the video immediately below this on Sakai with the definite integral piece of the puzzle. We'll make use of our definition and actually compute to that.